Uh, how should we start one of these things? Start whenever you want to do. Um, I guess I can do like a pan pizza impression. Click clack down the track. It's time for another exciting let's play of Banjo Kazooie Nuts in the Bolts. Uh, the best banjo game. In my personal opinion. And we're not joking. Oh, we're having some audio spikes. Yeah, that could be fixed later. Yeah. So, uh, before we start playing, I do have a bit of a story from 4th of July. Well, nothing that spectacular, but, uh... Obviously, I went down to a party for the 4th of July. It was alright. But when I was going back home, I decided to get that new Cheetos sandwich from KFC. And while adding this, just throw a picture of the sandwich. Okay. Like, on screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, you don't have to say it. We'll do it later. <laughs> well, just giving you an audio thing, you know, like... Yeah, well, we, we, yeah we can do it later. <laughs> so... Uh, so I guess this is an unofficial fast food review before we start playing Nuts and Bolts. I mean, it's a nice backdrop. It's like <laughs> a wallpaper. Yeah. I don't know. Playing guy was like fucking six bucks, which was like a lot for just sort of like a dinky sandwich. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's like it's a Cheetos like sandwich. So it has chicken... And Cheetos, like, cheese, and also actual Cheetos in the sandwich. Sounds like they're cheating you out of your money. Well, I thought what they were gonna do is, like, you know how it's breaded chicken? I thought they would, like, crush up Cheetos and, you know, put that, make it part of the breading. Mm -hmm. But instead, they had, like, this weird, like, cheese sauce that emulates the Cheetos flavor. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, everywhere. And, uh... I thought that was kind of weird. And they stuck, like, actual Cheetos in there as well. They all, like, fell out when I tried to eat it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they were trying to give it to a reviewer or <laughs> try and do it on a commercial, so... I don't know. Some people like it messy. And I, I can see Cheeto fans liking that. Oh, and you, you get choppy playback of... Just like the game demo. Um, yeah, I don't know why it looks so choppy, though. But I guess just to sort of wrap up this little fast food review segment, um, I thought it was alright. Not worth six bucks, honestly. And just, uh... You're not a sloppy eater. <laughs> yeah, that sandwich is, like, falling apart. Yeah. Just trying to eat it regularly. But it was like a limited time thing, and I've seen commercials for it everywhere, so I was just, you know, I'm gubby passing by KFC anyway, might as well pick one up. Um. And we pay not to have ads. <laughs> we get that YouTube premium. <laughs> uh, don't tell people that we own that. Uh, why not? Don't I get... support YouTube. I will support do it, it to the end of this earth, even though it's not giving me money back. <laughs> <laughs> Smash that like button! <laughs> no. I'll smash the A button. Good, you better. Oh, and here comes Log. The, the Pong Man. I forget what Log stands for. Isn't he, like, the king of video games? Yeah, he is, but what does the L stand for? Whatever, like... Well, I, I know the O stands for of game. Uh, like, the O and G stands for, like, of games. But, like, what does the L stand for? Like, it must be something, like, War... I think it's actually Lord of Games, if I get that right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, here's... Here's the himbo himself. Yeah, the himbo with the terrible rigging job. Can you explain to our audience what a himbo is? Um, it is a... Cutishly hot... Like big male that obviously I'm just gonna say clumsy I, I don't want to say any other words because himbo is pretty much used more as like a a male variant of like bimbo not even that because himbo just sounds like a like cute funny term like what is it we use it lightly as well you know give us an example of a himbo 
I'm a himbo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna say something like Launchpad from DuckTales. Yeah, he's a himbo. Um, some people have said Thor's a himbo in certain senses. Um, I guess I can see that. Yeah. Um, Talk about Thor. The opening of this game kind of is a bit similar to, like, fucking uh, Endgame. For those who actually watch the film. No spoilers. Or else you'll get spoiler blasted if you remember my near video. <laughs> but yeah. Load and load and load and. But yeah, never take the himbo nickname seriously. Bimbo is offensive. Himbo, no. Once and yes, that is sexist. <laughs> You know, the Smash stage kind of looks a lot like this one. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, when I saw that, I instantly remembered, like, the Smash Bros. gameplay. Hun, it is it. <laughs> Here are the games that I haven't played. I guess, for those who are watching, I'm just gonna be honest and say that I have zero nostalgia for Banjo-Kazooie. I never really grew up with the games, and... I really have no interest in going back to playing the N64 games, mostly because, like, I don't think they, like, age super well for, like, first-time players. He watched me play and saw how difficult and frustrating it is. I mean, if you like the game, go on you. I can I see the appeal. It's like Super Mario 64, but more, like, I can see the artsy effort. But yeah, it's your time. Yeah. Um... As, you we know, I, uh, the, as we watch the himbo not be a himbo. You know, I forgot how hot Banjo is. Just at this very moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> this specific moment. Hot. <laughs> I was waiting for him to I breathe I mean, he's, uh, he's a big boy. <laughs> That's some hot pizza right there. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, um, did you want to talk about, like, redesigns for the characters? Since, well, like... I sort of wanted to go over my my history with Banjo. Oh, go right ahead. So, with Banjo-Kazooie 1 and then Banjo-Tooie, um, I sort of knew about it because I grew up as a collector. Um, oh, before... I... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. But just to add, like, one thing, um... I always assumed, because you know how, like, video reviewers, analysis, whatever, whatever videos always use, like, the banjo soundtrack. Um, yeah. Until I actually sat down and listened to a banjo soundtrack, I thought a lot of, uh, a lot of the songs from that game were, like, fair use, like, royalty-free songs. On YouTube. Just because I hear so many people use it. Like, even if it's not related, like, they never mention Banjo in the video, they'll still use the music. Yeah, like, I honestly had literally zero idea. That shows how much he really knew about Banjo. <laughs> but yeah, um, as for my knowledge, like, I, I used to be collect- well, I still am a collector to an extent. Um, but it's, like, so widespread, you can't really say that, like, I get the full collection of everything. Either way, that's a sidestep, but just know that I knew about Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and I have one friend still to this day that, like, would always say, oh my god, it's a great game, but, like, he said a lot of games were great games. Um, credits to Sean. Um, but yeah, and, you know, I honestly never got to playing it even though like Sean probably had it um until after oh, I yeah. played this game real quick uh you're right lord of games Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that for the longest like I knew I thought he was like the the god of games or something but that wouldn't be right but yeah um, I really like his design though it's simplistic, and, like, he has little mouses. And, like, um, Pong as the face. 
Yeah, it's really creative. Like I like this guy. If they make another banjo, no matter like what they decide to do with it, I would like to see Log return. I'm sure they would bring it back. Um, if it's like also Viva Pinata, you like that game? I love that game too. I was gonna get into that slightly. Have you ever watched a show for it? Yes, like on repeat. <laughs> um, it's a great show. Um, it's one of those shows where you sort you're sort of surprised that like what they get away with because it's sort of like totally spies where they have a little bit of fetish fuel but not as much but well especially for people into dismemberment that too <laughs> yeah um but yeah I'll, I'll get into that in a moment like i'm sure there's going to be another viva pinata reference because they came out around the same time but yeah when i when I started playing Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which by the way I paid full price for, I just thought Banjo was too much of a himbo. <laughs> um, half joking. <laughs> nah. Um, so, yeah, just. I don't know. I, I started playing it, and other than Halo, this was like probably like my second or third game depending on whenever I started Castle Crashers that I genuinely enjoyed and I'm legit not joking and I'm just saying that like I just don't have any attachment to the first or second banjo games this was my legit first time playing banjo and I'll be like the legit one to say that I'm one of those people that are so nostalgic for nuts and bolts, and I'm old enough to be criticized for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's finally time that even though right now we're a small channel, hopefully this will rise up again and people will look at it in a serious manner like they did for that damn JonTron video. <laughs> Um, I guess like the biggest recent video was like the Panoops retrospective, mm -hmm. and even then, like to be honest, he did come off a bit as like an old banjo fan. Yeah. So this is more of a let's play from from two people that are outside of like the banjo fan club. Yeah, the outsiders looking in. Yeah, the OG Banjo Club, because I'm nostalgic for this game. I legit beat it two times and got 820 achievement points on this game alone. I don't know, I just find this game really fascinating, because, like, 3D platformers, there's tons of good 3D platformers. Mm -hmm. But, like, this game is kind of one of a kind. It really is. I've been trying to find, like, a game of this style and caliber for the longest um like i understand that like this game doesn't really use banjos and kazooie's like character traits to its best um and that they tried to use mechanics that are completely out of left field um but the thing is is that all in all, I never, like, hated the game for it. Probably because I never really looked for those things. But at the same time, if, you've, if you're engrossed in the environment and all that, and all the characters you're engrossed in, then is it really that bad? Like, I don't know. Because I know the original games, like, the reason why you have Kazooie is so you can fly around throw eggs and well poot out eggs and barf out eggs like because that makes sense because it's a bird um and then banjo is like he he's a big boy he he gets to beat people up yeah. because he's a big boy <laughs> um um did you want to get into like the redesigns real quick before we start like getting really into the game yeah, sure thing. Um, so... I, I, I feel like... In my honest opinion, I think the redesigns are fine. I think the biggest point of contention may be the eyes. Because, like, if 
They kept the same exact design, but gave them, like, the bigger cartoony eyes from the N64 games. People would be, you know, rather alright with it. And our designs seem alright. Like, Gruntilda's design looks fine. Right. And, like, the renders of the game don't really match up with, like, how they look in-game itself. Hmm. I mean... Also, it's just like... Because, like, the renders, like, don't really do justice to, like, the in-game models. Also, do you remember that this was sort of the era where, like... I, I call it the platformer teenager era, where, like, back in, like, the original Spyro, that, that had Spyro as, like, a seven-year-old child dragon. And then when they bring him on to the next generation, he's suddenly, like, a teenager. Um, I honestly feel like Banjo is the same. Or, or like, another example, Crash gets tattoos. I think that's teenage enough <laughs> um, to describe it. I mean, it was a legit change. But I also liked it. I'm going to be legit saying that. I have zero attachment to the original Spyro, Crash, or Banjo games, and liked the generation that came after it. <laughs> like, for all of them, across the board. Crash of the Titans, Crash Mind Over Mutant, Spyro... I only played, what? like, Crash of the Titans. I really liked, uh, I really liked Crash of the Titans. I heard Mind Over Mutant was kind of weak, but, um, I don't know. I guess I'm sort of in, like, the boat that, like, I like the... I like various games and series that people consider, like, the really awful black sheep because they're, like, different. Like, I like Crash of the Titans, I like Mario Party 9, and etc, etc. I mean, I wouldn't say that I like them because they're... Well, I, they're like the I said, I'm, I don't like them because they're different. I like them... I don't like them because they're the black sheep, I don't like them because they're different, I just sort of like them because of the fact that I like them. It's just, just in general, coinc across the board. I just think it's coincidental that some of the games I like in certain series are the ones that everyone, like, detests, like, yeah. hate more than anything. But yeah, legit, I just feel like the, z the designs went from complete kid to teenager. Like, I'm just legit saying that. Like, that's how I always felt. Like, when I played this game first, and then went to the... Then when I saw the renders of the N64 era, or even the in-game models of the N64 era of Banjo, I was just like, this looks kitty. <laughs> um, like, he, he legit looked like he aged up. Um, that was my initial response, without having critical views on anything um before um so i don't know i just like that age and maybe it's just because when i was going through my uh, like i like all i played all these games in my teenage era so that's probably why i was like that's probably why i'm associating it as such like i saw all these like colorful cute amazing himbo characters <laughs> Um, like, sort of grow up with me. Like, even though I didn't play their original games, I felt like they were sort of growing up with me. Like, how people like how, um, Harry Potter, um, sort of grew up with them. Um, and how, um, Stranger Things is actually having the kids grow up as well like they're doing time skips and stuff like that or ben 10 like those oh, are here's the here's the building yeah here's the building mechanics we should switch over to that discussion so i think victor has a much better like in-depth type discussion about the building mechanics in the well, game well i just think like we barely see building mechanics in games like this um, like, there's stuff like this in, like, Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that, but, like, this game goes, like, above and beyond, like, whatever you make, uh, you can make some of the craziest shit. Oh, look, 
one of the Viva Pinata guys is uh, in the tray. Yeah, they liked using that frog. Which, by the way, he kept on trying to... I remember that frog trying to catch um, Fergie, I think his name was. It, it was that... I, I don't even know how to describe what Fergie was. He was uh, what they called a fudge hog. It there sounds like some sort of like. He he just kept on trying to catch him with a net. It was one of those like episodic things, where like it's always a constant that he's always trying to catch him for some random reason I forget. Either way, yeah, you continue about the <laughs> vehicle stuff. <laughs> I don't know. This is what draw me into this game compared to like the other banjo games because like I saw that you can make some crazy shit with this. Like, you even have to exclusively make vehicles, like, you can make... Squidward. <laughs> yeah, Squidward. Like, uh... In the Panute's retrospective, he showed, like, a bunch of stuff, like, uh... He made, like, a functioning wrecking ball. Which, by the way, since we're bringing up Panute so much, we should probably link his video. I guess, uh... So, Put a, uh, little video... Can we do, like, the little eye? I don't know. I think, um, with talking with JW, Jonathan Wedge, um, which all you know from the Near Automata video, um, what is it? I remember him mentioning to me that there's some type of paid membership thing, or, like, you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to get that eye function. So, I'm just gonna leave the link in the description. Simple. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I thought the video was alright. It did kind of sell me on the game. But, uh, I just felt like, you know, might as well play the game for myself. Because I'm not a Banjo fan at all. So, like, I have... So I don't really think this game's, like, a sin against Banjo or anything. And plus Victor over here, Snack Vic. Um, he's... He's into really creative type games, like... I'm not talking about where the actual designers were creative. I'm talking about oh, where, you mean like games where you can create things where you can create things for like a purpose. Like you gotta remember that Banjo and Viva Pinata came out around the same time as like Minecraft. Did this come out around the same time as Minecraft? Uh huh. And guess who owns Minecraft? Microsoft. So guess what? Well, think about it. I think Minecraft came out a few years later, like near the end of the Xbox life cycle. Let me bring and Microsoft out... didn't originally own Minecraft. They bought it. Let me bring out my handy dandy phony. So let's see when Minecraft came out. Minecraft. What I am excited for is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Minecraft, when did it come I never out? really got into, like, Minecraft. You know, I sort of like Dragon Quest Builders because, like, it's essentially really similar. But you get, like, a story and stuff. Minecraft, and I just um, love Dragon Quest, like, aesthetically. Um, let me just say this. Minecraft came out on May 17th, 2009. And then I'll type in Banjo because I'm nuts and bolts. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Damn it, you're right, Victor. Uh well Vic. Ah. Um we used to say hun. I'm not gonna stop. So <laughs> So hun, yeah. Um, oh uh yeah, I guess big secrets out, we're gay. Ooh. <laughs> nah. I mean, please don't demonetize us, YouTube. Eh, I mean, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. And let's just not get into politics. Um, I mean, we live in Boston. We're gay. It's it's actually more normal than being straight at this point, in my opinion. So, uh, anyway, let's but, start go into the first world or whatever. Yeah, so I'm just gonna let you figure this out. Because I remember my first time playing this with uh, my old friend Ricky. 
Uh, we took like a legit hour trying to figure out how to get to where we need to go. Yeah, you can try that. You need a new set of wheels to get up that one. Well, uh, if I remember reading in the tutorial, there's like mumbo crates everywhere. Mumber. Well, you don't. I'm gonna say this right now, you don't get the wheels until later on. I guess we'll take the scenic route. Si, senora. I mean, you're not gonna be going up there too much, I believe. Pretty much anything with those tiled. Well, like, anything with an incline. It's sorta of hard to go up without special wheels. I've been playing, like, so much Crash Team Racing that I'm trying to get used to, like, these controls. Um, there was, like, one other vehicle place, vehicle placed, uh, vehicle based platformer mm -hmm. that I played on Switch called Car Quest. Car Quest. Um, I don't know, maybe put an image on the screen, show what it looks like, if people are interested. And I said we can do that. We don't have to say. <laughs> well, you know, just putting it out there so it's easier for you to remember while we're editing. Okay, okay. And I mean, it's normal for people to badger their editors during Let's Plays. Is it? I mean, Game Grumps does all the time. Uh, I guess we can do it too. So you don't have to be breathing down my neck. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's the only R game that I can think of off the top of my head, which was like a platformer, but based on like like car physics. Yeah. Can you believe like 2008 was like over a decade ago, and we still haven't gotten Grintilda's land thing? Oh yeah, like when the Xbox. Uh, for those who didn't know, when the Xbox One was first shown off, one of the games that was uh, source, yeah, source soft announced was uh, Gruntilda Land. Yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a name. And didn't uh, I forget if nuts and bolts like what? What are you doing? Get in the car. How do I uh, lift things? It, um, I I forget. I think it was like. Right trigger or something. Yeah, oh, that's there you how go. You do it. I played it so much. I In the remember. tutorial, I was sort of a uh... lot. And why did you hit eight? <laughs> oh yeah, the the whole X debacle, where the X is literally on different buttons. Yeah, I... different consoles. <laughs> well, it's not as bad as PlayStation because it does like shapes instead of like everything else. Yeah. Did you guys know that X was meant to be, like, confirm and then circle meant, um, I mean, no. X meant no. Circle meant yes. Um, and then triangle meant map. And then square meant, like, inventory. Something like that. <laughs> but then it sort of swapped in, like, America. Where, like, people... For some reason. Well, for a lot of games on PlayStation, um, it was like triangle to go back, at least for a lot of early PlayStation games, and X to confirm. Yeah, there just wasn't any, like, base knowledge, so eventually we made our own base knowledge. But that was the original setup, what I just said. So. Yeah. And now you can go to the first world. How long have we been, like, recording? Don't ask then, recording, <laughs> hun. Um, by the way, I'm close to the mic. How do you like my voice? Um, it's about 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, we we can easily go on for like a little bit long. Like, we can easily go for like an hour and a half or something if you like. I was just double checking. I'm sort of training this more as like a stream than a uh, uh, let's play. Yeah. Oh, Banjo dissolved. He's dead. He is dead. I mean, to be I can't believe Banjo's fucking dead. 
boutique of a sponge. Oh, oh and widescreen log. Nutty acres. Everyone complains this looks too open and barren. But the thing is, is that you don't know what this game is about. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just joking. I don't want to harsh anyone. But in re but really, Waddles, though, he's alive. I thought he was dead. Nah, I think they revived him or something. There's some type of lore that they do get into. And then Mr. Fit, who's never fit. I mean, at the same time, I mean... Isn't that just the guy from Spyro? Sort of. <laughs> I guess. Like an edgier, like, cousin. Now, now talk to the... Talk to Igor. I'm just gonna call him Igor. Because that's what he basically is. <laughs> But now he's like harvesting. I don't know. He has plaid on. I guess the whole like gimmick of this is like, oh, each time you revisit one of these worlds, all these characters are playing different roles. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, a lot of people complain that like the worlds feel too barren and like characters are randomly placed in every world. Well, to be fairly honest, like, I remember from my first time playing, I don't, I never felt that way. I never felt like it was barren. And even now, just looking at it, it still doesn't look barren. I mean, I don't know, just, I don't really know how to counteract that other than that, like, if you feel like it's barren, then, like, in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie 1 and 2, um, then, like, Ban Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie were definitely more about, uh, like, they were concise to the point, um, and had a lot of limitations and were a lot more geared towards, like, a linear-type path. Like, why, sure, you can do things at different times, but the thing about this game is, like we said before, is that it's more about making your own way to the objective with your vehicle customizations and all this. Like, I would sometimes, like, take hours trying to figure out how to do something I uh, like finish oh. an objective. <laughs> For a second, I pressed like, the wrong button. I'm so used to like crash team racing. Where it goes like three, two, one, go. No, no, where it's more like. Uh, By the way, water slows you down a bit, but it's whatever. Well, where it was like X to accelerate, so I was pressing the A button. Yeah. But yeah, I would like take like legit like an hour on like a certain objective to get a jiggy, and then my friend Ricky comes up with this off-the-walls type, like, vehicle customization that, like, gets him to the objective, like, in no time, you know? Um, like, for example, um, what's that YouTuber's name? Um, the, the one that had that, like, retrospective? Uh, Panutes. Panutes. Panutes Toots. Magoots. Yeah, so Panutes, I remember he had... Mr. P Pagoo. <laughs> Mr. Smugoo. Magoo. Where, Where are all the blind Let's Players at? If you're a blind Let's Player, comment down below. We love and appreciate you. Wait, what? <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Magoo was, like, blind. That was the whole joke. I, I don't know who Mr. Magoo is, to be fairly honest. Like, I only know the name. But yeah, regardless, um, Panutes, um, I'm pretty sure he did this reference where, like, um, he did a cheat for, like, 
you had to stay up in the air for a certain amount of time. Um, but what he did was um, he basically made a vehicle that had springs on all axes of his vehicle. So, because they registered you getting off your vehicle as part of, like, the challenge. Like, if you got off your vehicle, or, like, or if you touched the ground, like, that's what... Uh, uh, that's... This air attack animation reminds me of ukulele. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, it, I never played banjo, but I did play ukulele. Mm. But yeah, if you ever touch the ground, um, that that's when the objective would have failed. But the thing is, is that if you had the springs on, then you would never touch the ground <laughs> until like one of the springs broke. So like, Panutes basically beat the objective like there was no business, and I remember having that specific jiggy really hard but he figured it out <laughs> I don't know like crack the code very simply I mean that's just sort of like a cool thing that you can do with like the vehicle customization it's really open ended where you can do like you know a lot of neat things yeah so if you feel like the worlds are too open in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie then you're not playing the same game as us. <laughs> like, because if you're gonna have, like, open-ended vehicle editing, then you have to have an open-ended world. You Should know? we have been, like, paying attention to a story? No, the story... <laughs> the story is pretty much... Like, you have to get a lot of jiggies. That's about it. And... Something about becoming relevant in the game world again, or something. Because I wasn't reading a word, I was just talking. I mean, I've been trying to, like, keep track of things. I didn't know if you wanted to do silly voices for the characters or some dumb shit like that. Yuck. <laughs> nah. I don't want to do silly voices, I'm... It's I mean, probably because we have the volume down for the recording, but do they still do, like, the gibberish talk in this game? Yeah. I know when I played ukulele, I had to turn down the voices exclusively just due to the fact that... I think everyone did. <laughs> I don't know. I guess with, like, the original banjo, it was, like, fine, because everyone was used to, like, sort of the lower quality... You know, just sort of the lower quality, like, sound bites, and people didn't really care much for, like, stock sound effects, and, like, at least when Banjo talked, it was, like, sort of, like, giggling, but with, like, ukulele, it sounded like he was gasping for air whenever he talked. <laughs> I don't know how you sounds like, so I was trying to imitate. How, how would you say Yuka, like, how would you try to imitate it, since you Like, know. he says... Like, imagine someone trying to talk while breathing in at the same time. Try it. Bah! <laughs> I, I don't think I can replicate it. Yeah, I'll just put it in it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this, this game is very creative. And yeah, if I tried to, like, do a voice for these characters, I would be completely inexperienced. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bottles. Remember, I used to be dead? God, I wish that was still a thing. <laughs> Fuck you, Bottles. <laughs> Wait, Fuck did, him. <laughs> did he really say that, like, God, I wish that was still a thing? Like, I didn't read the end of it. <laughs> I didn't read the end of it. <laughs> Tell me what happened. <laughs> he didn't say that. That was just me being an asshole. So what did he actually say, didn't he? I don't know, he was just like, oh, I'm tutorial guy, but unlike the last game, you don't have to come to my dick every few minutes. Oh boy. But yeah, how do you like this game so far? Since it's your first time playing a banjo game ever. 
I'm still sort of just getting into it. It's sort of in, like, the tutorial phases where, like, there's not too much to do and you're just, uh, sort of just doing one challenge after the other. Mm -hmm. But so far I've been enjoying it. Yeah. I forgot that this game had Axe. Axe. Which is, I don't know, something. Fuck you, Bottles. Are you just gonna hate Bottles? <laughs> because he's just that nice, helpful nerd. Like, that. What was that turtle's name from Rock? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why, but Bottles just pisses me off. Fuck you, Bottles. Man, you sound like a generic <laughs> jock. Ant. Yeah, you can. Oh, oh, he, he's unconscious now. You gave him, like, a confession. What are you trying to do? I don't know, I'm just exploring the world. Isn't that what you're supposed to do in banjo games? Explore. Nah, banjo. Banjo games would never focus on that. Remember banjo on N64? Me neither. I remember all the polygons, that's for sure. I remember all the unnecessary textures that were on it. Now mind you, I don't really hate Banjo-Kazooie or anything, it's just that... Like we said before, we never really grew up with the games, and... Go, trying to go back to them now when you're like, first time players is much more rough than people who are nostalgic for the games. So don't get us wrong, we don't hate the games, and if you like the games, good on you. We're just not fans. And to be fairly honest, like, I am honestly um, playing an emulated version of um, Banjo-Kazooie 1 on my um, PC right now. It's just that I don't want to start over again, um, just for streaming it. So... Um, and... This looks like a bootleg bullet bill. It is. Might as well be. But yeah, just... A bullet blill. And before you guys <laughs> tell me that emulation is bad and everything, I bought it for the 360. We can uh, we didn't emulate it, we just played it on our overclocked N64. Yeah. Wink. Wink, wink. Wink. But I did legit Fuck buy it you on bottles. The, I'll show you guys later. Like, I, I will go to my home screen with my terrible second ever made um, profile ID name. And, like, just show you that I got Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie on the Xbox 360 um, Live Arcade. And that's how I first played it. I, I played, it's, like... Uh... Is the font comic stands? No, this is definitely their own. But yeah. Uh, take the wheel for a sec. I'm gonna look up what font Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts uses. Oh my god, you're just making <laughs> me go into a game that I beat like two times. Alright, where's the Y button? Alright, that's the Y button. Alright. Put the bomb in the cart. Yep, and then just keep on trucking. I can do the sun. Make sure the bomb doesn't get out. And you guys say that if anyone says this isn't memorable, I sort of remember. Ah, that wasn't a bridge. I do remember this place. Like it was. Oh yeah, I have to go up here. Yeah, I go through the mountain. All right. Oh yeah, I can't do two things at the same time. As long as I still have all my wheels. Pretty sure I can do that better. I just sort I mean, of... the trophies, what do they do? Get you achievements. <laughs> um... I think they get you something. Um... Regardless, we don't have to go for that, I believe. Uh, I'll 
I I'm sure we'll find out if we actually need them later on. But yeah, um... What was I even saying? Brain farting. Oh yeah, but... Yeah, just... I did buy the games. It's just that my... Th this is my fourth Xbox 360. I will go over my history with it. So my first Xbox 360, I was sort of an early adopter. I got it, like within the first year. Um, it red rings, so I got a second one. And then I used my second one for a bit, and then... I'll be legit, I was hyped for the Kinect and got like 10 games for it. Um, so I wanted to get like a new Xbox 360 because I was worried that like, first of all, the biggest reason why I got the new Xbox 360 with the Kinect um, was because I was always worried about the red ring happening again. Oh uh, yeah. I remember when that happened the first time for like my older brother. There was like a trick where you had to do where you had to put like a towel over it. That did not work for me. I tried that. Actually and... uh, worked for my brother. Yeah. Um... But then, um, was it? I even had uh, my dad go to Micro Center. Um, he got like some fluid or something that was like six dollars. And mind you, he's a, a electrical mechanic, something like that. Right, Tom? Yeah. Like he works for Olympus. Um, and which, by the way, still does exist, but mainly for medical equipment colonoscopies just think of my dad <laughs> um but yeah just yeah for the whole uh like he's an electrical mechanic so he literally opened up my first xbox 360 um and got that specific liquid got that specific screwdriver and everything and like even tutorials were saying that that was the only, that was the last and only thing that could fix the 360 from Red Ring. It didn't work. So we bought a new 360, and that was my second one. So once I got my third one, um, with the Connect enabled stuff and all that, I was just like. Okay, cool. I got an Xbox 360 model that won't ride ring on me unless I kick it to the curb. <laughs> um, so, I gave my second Xbox 360 to my friend Sean um, because I, for, I, I think he didn't have one. So, I was just like, why have two 360s, you know? Um, and if it red ringed on him, eh, he got it for free. Um, so, but then, like, after, like, five years or so of, I wouldn't say five years, maybe, like, three to five years of not using my 360, um, like, my friend Ruben from college, um, after, like, two years into college, I forget why, but we wanted to play Black Ops 2 Zombies, even though I'm not into Call of Duty. He just for some reason got me into, like, wanting to at least try it again with him. I forget why. But so I hook up my 360, that, the third 360, um, connect enabled and everything. And guess what happens? I'll give you like five seconds. Comments <laughs> in the comment section below. <laughs> um, all right, five seconds up. So, um, for some reason, my 360 can't read the internal hard drive that it came with. It was like a 250 gigabyte hard drive and everything. Um, so, and it kept on like it kept on asking me to format it which I never did. So, I never hit the format button, 
So I hope that my save data is still up and kicking. Um, like maybe I just need to get uh, another 360 that can take that specific hard drive. Because it's not like the one that's on the top, it's the one that like is in a secret compartment, <laughs> if you know what I mean, and just goes in. Um, so, um, that whole thing happened. So, like, I was going to keep the 360 and stuff, but, um, instead I used an 8 gigabyte USB stick so we could play, um, the Black Ops 2 Zombies. Within 10 to 15 minutes, my 360 shuts off. And it's giving me the same problems that my Dreamcast currently has, where it just keeps on turning off every 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm just like... I'm not going to even stress this. <laughs> so, and then, um... I got my fourth 360 from a co-worker of mine. Um, it's Call of Duty version, ironically enough. Um, uh, Modern Warfare, etc. All I had to do was buy a, um, new hard drive because someone stole his hard drive or something. Um, which, mind you, I only paid five bucks for. Um, so I basically got a 360 for five dollars. But it's, like, that Modern Warfare 2 version is, like, I'm worried that it's one of the ones that can red ring because I'm fairly certain that like there's two versions of the I cucked that up last minute. Yeah, that's what can happen. Um But yeah, I like grove into a single existing tree. <laughs> that one existing tree. They knew that would happen. And how much you want to bet they did know? Like, you, you just, like, because it blends in a bit, you know? And you and, and you get sort of cocky at the end, so they're just like, let's add a random tree here. You know? Yeah. I need to, like, get more parts and shit to, like, make some that's, like, really quick. Yeah. But I could probably, like, beat this, uh... Right now. And then they add that cow that you can beat up. That you probably wouldn't know in the beginning that you could beat up. But yeah, um, I, I believe there's two models of the original 360, where, like, the very first models, like, had a much more serious Red Ring of Death problem, and then there was, like, later on in circulation, they fixed up sort of the internal stuff, um, to make it a lot less likely to get Red Ring. So, I know to keep in a well-ventilated area, etc., blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, they're so cheap now. If this one tanks, all I have to do is bring over the hard drive again. Yeah. While with the 360 that I had, the, one, the, the third 360 with the Kinect and all that, those are sort of, like, a little bit more pricey. And then not only that, I'm not sure how easy it'll be, like, I don't even know if it'll work. Because the hard drive problem is weird. Like, I don't know if it's specific to the 360 I had, or if it's gonna be that on, across the board. Oh, there's my car. Or if it has some type of, like, somehow got some type of malware on it, and I don't want it to break another 360. So, I lost all my save data, all my middle school progress. All I have is my achievement points to show that I actually played these games. I don't know, that's why I get like super, just like, uh, that's why I get like super cautious when it comes like save data and stuff like that, because it always sucks when you like lose everything. Yeah. And I wasn't going to duplicate everything over because, like, how would you even do that with an Xbox hard drive other than getting an adapter and putting it on your computer and all that, you know? 
So it's just weird. Oh my god, I'm just over examining Banjo's hair thing. Like the little hair flop. Like the little scruff. Yeah, the little, little growth. Yeah, the little growth. <laughs> the growth hair. I mean, that's not even his hair, that's just how his skull is shaped. Exactly. And it just plops a little bit. Um, but yeah, it just looks so different than, like, the rest of his fur. Like, look at it. Like, look at this angle. Like, it, it looks like he has, like, a buzzed, like, cut that you would give your kid with, like, a budget razor so you don't have to go to the barber. And then, like, it feels like it's a separate object that doesn't have that <laughs> same fur texture modifier for which is sort of 3D art talky. Which by the way I went to college for game art. Woo. So I might get a little bit technical. Exactly, woo. <laughs> Bachelor degree baby. And yes, I did get up for a new suit of art right before it closed down. So that's a thing. Uh, you know how new suit of art my college closed down? Oh, no, no, I know that. I just accidentally flipped the vehicle, like, over. Yeah, you can do that. You can sort of fling your car sometimes, too. I keep mix up X and Y because I mostly play, like, games on the Switch. Yeah. So I keep, like, trying to enter my vehicle, I keep, like, flipping it over. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can go into that one. I know those are magma balls, but it looked like you were contemplating. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of was listening to your story, so I have, like, no idea what to do. All I have to do is bring the fireballs into the fire. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Now you're just going to start. You might as well restart it. No, no, it's fine. I still have plenty of time for the jiggy. Uh-huh. Ants. Ant, ant, ant. Ant man. I think after this level we should cut it off. Or do you want to do another level and then we can just cut it off? Um, we could just like. Uh, yeah, we could just cut off after this mission. Yeah, because. If we do like any like serious building stuff, it'll probably be like off. Uh, off screen. Yeah, it'll probably just be off screen. Let's do at least one that's like on screen. Now, why are we. Green. Why is everything green? I don't know. It's weird. I keep trying to get into the vehicle. Hun. Stop being used to the switch controls. Okay, just le legit restart the level. You don't have enough time. I have enough time. Hun, I played this game enough to know when you should just restart. Look, I just have one more boulder after this one. Uh huh. Hey, why is everything green? Yeah. And the bloom is on max. Is this like a graphical glitch? It might be. Woo! I don't remember but the game. This, but the N64 game doesn't have this. Exactly. This, like, garbage piss. Man, Color fucking correction. all this bloom was this uh, average video game in the Xbox 360 era. You mean the Xbox One era? Well, I'm just saying, you know, like, the, the stereotype for games at the time is that everything was brown with an ass load of bloom. Cool. You know, like, games like Skyrim and shit. Mm. But yeah, I think you really did encounter, like, some color problem. I legit do not remember this. Does I that got fix this. it? Do you? Physics? I just got cucked by like, I don't know what that was, flowers? <laughs> oh, not, now you get hurt by trees! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these trees are totally natural. <laughs> As they just bonk you on the head. 
Don't worry, I got this. Uh huh. Man, you gotta get used to that 360 controller. I just keep mixing up Y and X. Uh huh. Shows how much Xbox you played before. I think the last game I even played with the Xbox controller. Well, I was about to say Psychonauts on the PC, but I remember we played Cuphead. Yeah, it's true, but I think we can make our own customizations, and we weren't like. Yeah, that's we, like a simple run and gun when this one's a bit more complex. Yeah, and plus, like, it shows us visuals, too. Like, oh, hit X to get into the car. And then we're just like, oh, okay. And then when you go and hit X, it's like, oh, that was Y. Do you think we're still going to get the graphical glitch? Um... Nah. Okay, that's good. I way, actually well. read the... I actually read what we had to do this time. We have to put them in the water to cool them off. Pats for Patrick. <laughs> you read. Well, I didn't want to interrupt Joey's story time. Yeah, that doesn't mean you have to listen constantly. Nah, I'm just joking. You do have to listen. Um, I think I remember like a thing where I would just like, since you have to put it in water, I would just like chuck it into the water and just let it roll on its own. You know, I always like tropical areas in video games. Even though this has like the mechanical aspect, it really looks kind of nice. In the real world, I wear Hawaiian shirts as much as I want, even in the winter time. Yeah. So I agree with you on that statement. Awkward silence. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to fucking focus on not mixing up all these controls. You're only just crush my water bottle. ASMR. Let's play a Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Uh, here's some war ball crushing. <laughs> Lovely. I keep pressing A to accelerate. I'm so used to Crash Team Racing, which is a great game. It is really fun. It is a video game. Difficulty spike is terrible, though. <laughs> Put it on normal so you don't feel like a pussy, and then you find out that it's like super hard and everyone thinks it is. <laughs> Should I use pussy as a word? I mean, pussy! Yes. Uh, they swears fine, just don't say slurs. Yeah. Oh, just... <laughs> I keep pressing X. I keep, like, talking myself up by tilting the cart. Mm. Water! Lug. I'm thirsty. And then drink some water, it's right in front of you. I was making a joke how I ran right into the water. ASMR. I've honestly never watched an ASMR video. All I know is people imitating it. <laughs> well, technically, you go to bed with like the fan sound. Sometimes we'll that's black no that's white noise. Well, whatever. people consider that ASMR. So what? They just go to sleep with somebody speaking ASMR. Well, it's kind of like the same thing. I'll have to do some research, but either way, keep pressing, 
keep pressing X instead of Y. If you keep this up, you're gonna oh. break your vehicle. Which you can legit do. I hope you know. I know, the vehicle's falling apart when you're doing that bullet blue challenge. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, so how would you like to end off this video? Hmm. Um, I would like to give a personal message to Bottles. Go fuck yourself. You being dead was the happiest moment in my life, but that was ripped away from me. Alright, bye everyone. That cut here. <laughs> I didn't get to say bye. You can just edit yourself saying bye. Bottles, I'm happy you got a phoenix down. Now die again. That's what a phoenix down does? <laughs>